A few months ago, I took on a project for a video that I was going to do on trusses. I was going to explain the theory behind trusses and build some and, and demonstrate why they're the strongest structure. I stole the idea from the YouTube channel Engineering Hub. And while they explained how trusses work conceptually, their experiment was pretty flawed. So I figured that I could take it on and, and do a better job than they did. And I was wrong. The project was a complete disaster. And I figured it would be a good example of how you should and should not take on engineering projects. Every engineering project has to have a goal, a reason why you're doing the work. In fact, at my work, we always start each project with what's called a design quality plan, which is basically a document that identifies your scope, your goals, your constraints, requirements, and so on. The goal for this project might have been something like to explain how trusses work and demonstrate that they are in fact the strongest type of structure. My requirement was that my truss bridge had to be able to hold more weight than a beam bridge. Both bridges had to be the same weight for a fair comparison. They had to be the same length, no more than 100 to maybe 200 pounds of braking load. And the load had to be acting vertical, had to be straight down. Once you've defined all these, your next step is to estimate what your timeline and budget is going to be. And this is usually the hardest part. Every engineer project I've ever worked on has got over time and over budget. It's kind of inherent. So I guessed that this would take six weeks, 10 hours a week kind of thing. It was a wild guess. I should have broken down my tasks and tried to get a better estimate of it. Um, so that's kind of mistake number one. So I started building out the structure first. The only requirement for this was that I had to support the weight of the bridges and had to be wide enough that I could put a bucket underneath to hang the weight off of. Then I started designing the bridges and it seems like it should be really easy, but I made it very hard on myself because of my weight constraint. Trying to match the weight of the truss to the weight of the beam was actually incredibly hard. And it's something looking back that I didn't need to have such a hard constraint there. I just made things very hard on myself and this took way longer than it should have. Lastly, was figuring out the load supports and how I was going to load each bridge. This was the part that I needed to improve the most from Engineering Hub's video. I needed to have a, a strong structure that can hold the weight. The load need to, needed to be acting down. And I made sure that my supports were not going to damage the structure itself. The big day finally came to test. The beam held about 87 pounds. And the truss held 28 pounds. By all means, feel free to roast my poor craftsmanship skills because very clearly the supports, the gussets are what failed on the truss. Normally you might just think, well, okay, big deal. Just beef them up and try it again. But that wasn't an option for me. If I started using bolts and fasteners, that would increase the weight of my truss. And because of my weight constraint, I would have to beef up the beam to catch up and that would have become stronger. So I just abandoned the project. Reviewing this whole project, I can kind of see where the mistakes I made were and why I spent four months just to fail and have no sort of backup plan. So I, I think I can sum it up in a few points. First is create an actual project plan. I didn't create any sort of plan like I would normally at work. I treated this like a hobby and I got hobby results. What are my critical paths? I should have tested those supports way, way earlier on. I could have easily built the truss and just put some weight on it and, and at least got an idea of, okay, these are pretty weak. They're, they're going to have to rethink the, the design. But I waited until three months later when I, I was just so certain that these, for whatever reason, I was so certain these supports were, were not going to be the weak point. Uh, and, and they were, and I, I didn't have a plan to, to fix them otherwise. This is why you plan things so that you can identify where you might fail, what you should do to mitigate those. And I didn't do that. Are your goals and your constraints, are they accurate? This weight constraint really hindered me. I'm wondering, is it flawed? Like, is this how you compare structures, like the efficiency of structures? Is it all based on weight? I'm not a structural engineer. Maybe I should have done a little bit more research on this. So don't put yourself in too much of a box where you 
make things so miserable for yourself if if they don't need to be. As far as the project itself, I do really want to do it properly. I just, I'm not sure where to start. Some of the comments I got from TikTok, for example, were, well, you have to load the trust from the top. I still don't understand this. I don't see how the free body diagram changes, whether you load it at the top or the bottom. You guys are probably smarter than me. You can tell me why this matters. What I really want to know is, is this project flawed? Is a truss always supposed to be stronger than a beam? Do these small craft bridges really represent actual bridges and actual structures? Is it a relevant comparison? I don't know. Kind of looking for a little bit of insight into my thinking. So. Hopefully you guys got something out of this. I think uh, I think a lot of engineering projects end up this way. So that's why I thought it was a good example to share. And uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like this video, do me a favor and hit that like button too. Thank you guys for, uh, for watching and we'll see you next time. Ciao.